Welcome to another podcast episode. In this episode, we're talking about going all in. What does going all in actually mean and how to start? As funny as that sounds, when we say go all in, you think just go all in now. I've heard that term so many times. I've heard it with other business owners, with other coaches in a similar space to what I am. Um, all sorts of people from all walks of life you hear that saying all in, family members, friends and whatnot, our clients, our employees. What does it actually mean? What does going all in actually mean for you as a husband, as a father, as a man? And how can you start? How can you start to go all in? Because it's not just a one or nothing, as silly as that sounds. But the unfortunate reality for many men is they think they're going all in, but they keep fucking up and going in the wrong places. This comes down to some fundamental truths where we need to understand and acknowledge that being an amazing father actually has nothing to do with fatherhood. Being an amazing husband has nothing to do with your marriage. Time management has nothing to do with time and all of these different stories that we need to break down together as a team. That's why I'm here. I've really missed doing these episodes. I'm glad to be back on track, back on deck and doing these and just providing value where a lot of the messages, most of the messages actually come through the members themselves. So when it comes to going all in on your life, we need to really understand where we are right now. And the crazy part with this, man, like over 200 podcast episodes now, the crazy part with this is you really need to recognize that the message is very similar. It's just the creativity and the different words, cues, or points of focus that helps you draw back into starting off with alignment. Where am I now? Where do I need to go? Where am I right now? When you're trying to paint the picture of where you need to go, it is fucking useless, man if you don't know where you are. And I've said this, going from Australia to England is a completely different trip from somewhere else to England, or going from Australia to Europe, or England into Europe, or going to Italy, so to speak. Love to go there and see where the old boy grew up. Going from South Africa to Italy, going from Russia to Italy. It's all different starting points. So when we don't know where we're actually coming from and where we're starting from, you're really searching in the dark and you're going in blind when it comes to trying to create different types of goals and outcomes off the back of the challenges you're currently faced with. So alignment is critical, man, because if you go all in on the wrong things, it'll unfortunately fuck you up and make things worse, which is why people really hesitate. When people say, yeah, I'm all in, I'm all in, I'm all in, it's no, you're not actually all in. You're not all in the way you think that you should be or need to be. And you're actually not all in in terms of the resources and resourcefulness that needs to be applied to be successful. That's really tough. I talk to people about this all the time. Are you all in? Are you going all in? Are you all in on this? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Do you actually understand what that means? You need to cut away sacrifices that right now might not appear to be or seem as a sacrifice with the future version looking back. But right now, it absolutely is. It's something I enjoy. I don't want to give that up. I don't want to give it away when it comes to whether it's alcohol I'm not telling you you shouldn't drink anything, man. Do whatever you want. But for me, at the end of the day, the reason why my life has become phenomenally successful in leaps and bounds is because of the perceived sacrifice at the time of doing something that was A, familiar, B, I loved, C, I enjoyed as part of my routine or ritual. So I love doing it. It's something that I really liked having as a rhythm or a routine, whether it was drinking, partying. I never did drugs and that sort of stuff. But essentially, at the end of the day, we need to really review and analyze, is this actually a sacrifice for the version I am now? Or if I keep doing this, is this gonna sacrifice the version I become? That's a critical thing, man, that you must continuously explore inside of yourself. I watched a movie last night, probably the first time I've watched a movie in a couple of months, Terminator 2, <laughs> Crack, cracker of a movie, brought back some great memories, but I was fucking shattered, man. Like, I've gotta be honest, I was ready for bed before the movie started. And it's not that I'm a boring man, boring man by any means. Those who know me and work closely on me in a circle, that's far from the truth. Um, but I was just shattered. And I woke up today groggy. Like, man, I was like, I've been fucking drugged. What's going on here? And like, that's not that again, I have anything against television. It's just when you start to reach a higher level of performance inside of your life, you actually realize and recognize that just these little one percenters everywhere they're really fucking you up. 
And this is the crazy part, gentlemen. You may think it's okay to do this with the drinking or do this with the pornography or do this with the drugs here and there. It's not, have a few extra shots of coffee and they're all fucking addictions. Like humans by nature have addictive personalities. It's how we not only survived but thrived and actually evolved through our addictive personality of wanting more, wanting to be more, wanting to do more. So you've got that, you've got that tool, that's an asset for you, but it's turned into a liability, which means when you try and go all in, you're all fucked up, you're all over the place, you don't know where you should start, what you should do, or what you should let go of, or what you choose to hold on to that you don't even know about. So all of a sudden, these 1%, they rack up, and they rack up and they build and build and build, and all of a sudden, you're like, yeah, no, I'm doing all right, Alec. I have a couple of little vices here and there that I just enjoy, but that's life, it's all good, and it's add up all those little vices, man, and anywhere between 1 to 3 or 1 to 5% in them hindering you, or keeping you stuck where you're at, this is the hard part too. That's why I talk about alignment and being a visionary, to actually have that vision to see the opportunity cost, because you're not doing what you can possibly or potentially be doing. All of a sudden, these rack up. It's, oh, well, man, when we have a look at this, you're operating at 100% of 73%. Is that clear? Does that make sense to you where all of these little 1% to 3 percent is that you're continually investing into because this is what's sacrificing the future version of you because this is added up to 27%. You're actually being pulled down 20 So you're operating at 100%, but the actual low common denominator is 73, that's your max, you're maxed out at that, that's the best you can do. So you can do 100% of 73, but unfortunately, that means you're only operating at 73%. So we get stuck in this spiral where we continually invest in little things that chip away at the one to 3% because we validate or justify things that are part of our makeup, part of our routine, part of our ritual, part of our identity, all the while thinking that we're sacrificing if we give it up, where really, you're actually sacrificing who you become if you don't. I just want you to sit on that for a second, fellas, as we start to really peel the layers back and talk about what going all in really means. It's not about being a saint. It's not about doing everything I need to do. But the crazy part with life is if you really want to expand and develop into a higher version of yourself, you need to model someone or something, right? So you need to find someone who's either got what you want or done what you want to do. So if I, and I'm just a message and the voice of HPF, obviously I live and breathe it in family, self and service and dominating in all areas and when I say dominating I'm dominating with all the pitfalls all the adversities all the challenges it's not just a clear run it never is so if I've got something you want or if I've done something you want to do it probably would serve you well to pay some level of attention not so much to Alex Renieri if I can worry about him what and who I symbolize and what and who we symbolize inside of high performance father and what we symbolize is going all in and going all in in a way that, you know what, yes, you are going to make sacrifices. You are sacrificing the current version of who you are because he no longer serves you. The current version of who you are, not that you're not enough, it's just that you won't be enough if you want to ascend or transcend into the next version, the next evolution of you, the next phase of your life for yourself as a man, as a husband, and as a father. Which is why, ironically, when I say these things like being an amazing father has nothing to do with fatherhood or an amazing husband has nothing to do with marriage, we peel back the layers, we go back. When I talk about going upstream, just to paint that picture, because I talked about that a lot, think about the top of the mountain. Like today, this session right here and now, we're going right to the fucking top, mate. We're going to the top of the mountain. Any downpour, any rain, anything that comes starts at that high point and then comes down. So when I say going upstream, you've got to imagine right at the top of the mountain is what? It's generally the source. So when we look at the source, like a stream with water that's coming and running down, a lot of the times people are down a few kilometers down by the creek, which then goes into a waterfall, and they're addressing all the chaos and all the bullshit and all the drama and all the worry and concern that's just about to happen on tipping over the edge and going down this massive fucking waterfall and there's shit everywhere, and that's chaotic, and you're so zoomed in and focused on that because it's such a large energy source right then and there at the time, when all you need to do is actually just go upstream a little bit, or it's a little bit calmer waters, maybe it's starting to build up there's a few rapids but go upstream even more or go right up to the source and then you can use that as a tool as a visual to analyze the reason why your marriage turned into what it turned into the reason why the children all of a sudden feel a bit estranged to you the reason why you feel like life's just got you under the fucking pump and you just can't quite make it out and you just stay in this grind and this grind so you resort to certain types of addictions whether it's drugs alcohol technology television pornography caffeine like, it's been tough. Last couple of weeks, I've cut my coffee right down. Again, 
people will always have a reason for anything they fucking do in this world. Otherwise they wouldn't do it, right? A coffee's good for you, it gives you this and that. I'm not here to argue about the benefits or the consequences of having coffee. What I'm talking about is going upstream, going to the source. If coffee is something that is dependent of you and you're having four, five, six, seven, eight, ten shots a day, that is something that you are dependent on. That's an addiction, man. You're fucking addicted to that. I don't care how healthy it is. I don't care if it's something that some ancient cat shat out after fucking eating it and they've made some sort of special coffee bean out of it in the Himalayas. I don't care. At the end of the day, it's not so much the ingredients or the nutrients that is destroying you. It's the coping mechanism, the escape, and the addiction that you have to that, which becomes an attachment and an unhealthy attachment. It's no different to exercise. Being in the health and fitness space earlier on in my life, I saw that. People would escape certain addictions and then attach on to other addictions. Now look, is it a healthy addiction? Yeah, probably. But at the end of the day, if you're training six, seven days a week chronically, and your body, like in terms of your body awareness and confidence, self-esteem, what defines you, your identity, like, is bound by one singular thing. And trust me, like I love, and we're going to dive into three key areas on how to start going all in this episode. But if your body is something that is an addictive form to validate or justify who you are, that was me, man, as an elite athlete. My body and my performance defined who I was. So when I lost that through operations and other challenges and hurdles, becoming a father, not being able to train as much as I wanted to, losing sleep, that fucking crushed me, man. I didn't know who I was anymore. So anything can become an addiction and any great thing can become something that becomes your downfall. If I'm going to be addicted to anything with truth and transparency for all of you, I'm addicted to growth. Like it, it's not that it's a bad thing, fellas, when you have certain types of addictive behaviors, that's part of our natural makeup as human beings. The question is, where are you steering the, I guess, the nature of where these addictions can take you? Where are you steering these preconceived ideas of this is the answer, this is the pathway forward, this is who I will become? And are you constantly analyzing and reviewing that? So whilst I'm addicted to growth, it's actually out of, essentially, it's out of a hate <laughs> and a disgust for waste. I just fucking hate waste, man. I can't stand it. Like life is too much of a precious gift for us to sit here, sit back on our fucking hands and then just waste it. But whilst I have this addiction to growth, there are times where I break the pattern and maybe addiction is the word, maybe it isn't. What I'm saying is we find coping mechanisms or things that we attach onto or things that we use as a crutch to validate who we are or to drive a certain style or way of living. So if I let this, say, addiction before growth get out of hand, it becomes too much, too heavy. My family suffers, my wife suffers, maybe people aren't as ambitious as me. Maybe I'm judging, engaging what growth looks like, right? From my perspective, what I believe growing as a human being should be, where other people might have different things. Like I might think growing is business, right? My wife might think growing is how she's raising our children. Completely different metrics, two of which were the dynamics of a man and a woman. I've got no fucking idea what that would look like when it comes to actually building a child, creating a child inside of a womb and birthing it. So I'll tell you right now, they can fuck off that emoji of the pregnant man because that's absolute bullshit. And it's pretty disappointing where the world's going on pushing these sorts of agenda onto people. But uh, maybe that's a conversation for another day where we should celebrate that the reason why the fucking species is actually here to start with and survived is because of our heterosexual nature. But at the end of the day, fellas, when we're looking at certain addictions, if they are pulling you out of alignment, and this is why our principles are so valuable inside of HPF, one of them being the founding principle, the circle of significance, family, self, and service. If it's pulling you out of alignment, you need to address that. You need to have a pattern interrupting, okay, I'm not really going all in on life, and this is why. And I've had that. I had the addiction to exercise. I wouldn't say I had an addiction to pornography, but back in the past, yeah, there were times where I was watching it way more than I fucking should have to start with. And secondly, it was a coping mechanism and an escape. Yeah, my wife just had our baby, had a cesarean. Obviously, as all of you men know, when whether they birth a child naturally or have a cesarean, that means that nookie time goes down. And for us as men, that's not the only way, but it's a very high, deeper way that we communicate, just like a high and deep way that women communicate is sensory or through words and emotions. But at the end of the day, that was a choice that I made. And it wasn't something that I was clear to either work through. I didn't set, not a deadline, but I didn't set a passage of time to go, you know what, this will pass. Let's just be fucking patient. Let's play the long game. And all these different stories into my head, which is what I said earlier. No matter what you do, you'll always have a fucking reason to justify it. Otherwise, you wouldn't do it. Every single thing that's happened in this world, from murderers to bloody addict... The reason why there's things like AA in place and all these people buying guns and shooting people or stabbing people or cheating on each other and all the craziest shit and all the great things as well. This isn't just fucking a story about darkness. This is about understanding that... At the end of the day, every single thing, the good, the bad, and the ugly that has been done inside of this world had a reasoning behind it. 
people might go, oh, no, I just did that for no reason. And no, you did. You just don't quite understand the reason or maybe you don't have a level of self-awareness to know why. Just like maybe some of you guys who every Thursday, Friday and Saturday, you get on the drink and that's just how you unwind because you've earned that right because you've worked hard for the week. Great. That's a fucking reason. That's a story. How's that improving your life? How's that making you a better man or husband or father? So we need to actually triage ourselves and just peel the layers back one by one. And unfortunately, most people only go one or two layers deep. When you really go deep into it and you look at your habits or your addictions or things that are a coping mechanism. Now, coffee's really good for you. Look, I only have two double shots a day and sometimes I'll have a third if I have a really big day and I feel okay. And you know what? I get moving and the family gets what they need and blow on. And you work through that. When you continually peel the layers back, you understand that you're losing control in certain areas. You're losing control through certain things, certain devices, certain coping mechanisms. And these are all here to either fill a void that's missing inside of your life or hit a chemical response or reaction, whether it's the happy hormones, endorphins, dopamine, oxytocin or serotonin, whether it's the happy hormones or something to help you validate your position, feel significant, feel important. When we do, the, when we do these things, gentlemen, it's because we don't feel important. More often than not, like you, we talk about self-love and self-hate and all these different things. Let's make it really simple. The reason why you'll resort to certain things is because there is a lack of self-importance or there is a lack of perceived importance through the eyes of others that you're making judgment on or maybe getting feedback on as well. But I'll have you ask yourself this question or have you consider this. Maybe you're not adding enough value to those around you or selling yourself on why you're valuable to those around you or finding out what value looks like to those around you so you can then bridge the gap between what you want, staying true to your values and what you do and what you can provide for with your children, your wife, your workers, colleagues or clients. Because that's really important. The person I thought I needed to be always comes down to A, gauging what I want in this world and who I want to be and who I choose to be, but B, actually continuously seeking feedback and counseling those in my inner circle of what and who I need to be at specific times. That doesn't mean that I'm a chameleon that molds myself around other people's perceptions, judgment, or what they think I should be. I think that's pretty clear when you look at a lot of my ads, a lot of the criticisms, I leave it all up there. I'll rarely delete, if anything, I don't look after that, my team does, but if anything, our team will only ever delete certain men who are uh, giving us death threats or certain types of abuse, which is very horrific. And some of these men, unfortunately, and this isn't a man versus woman thing, will jump on my ads and really, really get heavy in how they talk about women, including physical abuse. That shit's not on, that shit's not on. We, we ban those guys straight away, obviously, but I'm not here to determine who I am off the back of the fucking critics or even the great people, but seeking counsel to look at different perspectives, to ask the question, because at the end of the day, gentlemen, you are stuck inside of a singular range, or maybe you don't have a range, of perspectives that is you as you currently stand right here and now. So I'll have you consider the reason why you can't go all in life is because maybe you feel stuck. Maybe you're not quite sure what that looks like. Maybe your version of all in was doing all your extras with the footy, your extra burpees, extra tackle tech, extra passing of the footy and all those different things. That's one form of possibly going all in. Maybe going all in is just stacking those one percenters. Maybe going all in is just stacking those little one percenters or cutting away the one percenters that are hurting you. So you can get back up to 80%. So you can get back up to 85%, back up to 90%, back up to 95%. What, go, what going all in actually means is actually sitting down and going, what the fuck do I actually want out of my life? What do I want out of my wife? What do I want out of my children? What do I want out of my business or place of work? What do I want in terms of building financial prosperity? We're living on a monetary planet. Don't treat money as a taboo thing no one should talk about. It's very fucking important. What are you doing to level yourself up, develop skills, raise your income, obviously raise your impact with your business? This is an important thing to talk about as well. What do you want out of that? What do you want out of yourself as a man? What do you want out of the experiences that you have? What does that actually look like for you? And then who do you want to be for your wife? You can't just take and take. Who do you want to be for your children? Which is why I talk about seeking some level of counsel because you give them what you think they want. And I think we all know, and those listening to this or watching this now understand where that slippery slope ends up. Straight off the waterfall, instead of going up to the source. So at the end of the day, you need to really start by giving yourself the space and time to go, okay, what do I actually want? What is in my way of getting that? What is in my way of getting that right here and now? What's standing in the way? You need to be crystal clear on that, man. That's physical roadblocks and barriers. It's people, places, and things. What other people are standing in the way? Environmental influences, place of work or business, clients, employees, and whatnot. 
what place is environmental? Okay, where am I? Where am I engaging and investing my time? Am I going down to the pub or going to different environments that are unwholesome, not serving me very well? What does that actually look like? But the most important one out of that, and what things, what little habits or routines or objects that I'm doing things with, technology, speak about drugs, pornography, what are the things that are holding me back? What stands in your way? And then the bullshit stories inside your head. What stands in your way there? What is actually standing in your way in terms of your own headspace, your own way of thinking, your own belief systems, who you believe you are, what you believe is life or what life should be, what your current belief systems are, what your emotions and thoughts dictate to you, what your current actions are, the routine of your actions, the routine of the actions you don't take, which is the next one. So what do you actually want out of life? Sounds crazily simple, right? This is what fucking blows my mind, man. How many people don't go all in? It's insane. It's fucking ridiculous, to be honest. And I say it's ridiculous. Neither is it good or bad. It's just ridiculous in terms of probably more like a shock or a surprise. Not that many things shock or surprise me anymore these days. But at the end of the day, see how possible it actually is. But people just don't do it. It's crazy, man. They just, they either don't do it or they don't want to. And whether you're a member on the inside or not, obviously members on the inside have such a concentrated dose and they 10x whatever you guys might be listening to in this, seeing on the YouTube channel that we have, the little snippets of the daily revelations I put out, our free group that we dive in and give content to and help support and guide. So whether you're on the inside or the outside, it's irrelevant. Like we're all building this community together to be a message to fucking stand for something, man, instead of falling for everything. Like 90% of fucking men out there and I say men, I say everyone, but I say men because we have a duty and obligation. We have a responsibility to stand up and exercise our power, our strength and what we have inside of ourselves, just like women do in a different light, in a different way with their responsibility. And that's not bound by roles or changing fucking nappies. It's determined by the way that we think, operate, perform, produce. We've got fucking bigger muscles than women. We've got different things that we have over women. They have different things that they have over us. This is the yin and the yang. But what are we doing as fucking men to lead where we need to be led when people, unfortunately at times women, just focus on the fucking problem. But men, the way that we create and continue to create this world of impossibilities, focus on the solution. And that's just not one universal trait of a man and woman. You can focus on the problem too. That doesn't mean I'm calling you a woman if you just sit and wallow in your own pity parties. But what I'm saying is you have a certain type of nature. You have a mentality inside of you that maybe you haven't quite tapped into yet. You have a mentality to be that fucking animal, man. Like you can be that, and an animal in a great sense. An absolute fucking warrior. The Viking. A man who is ferocious and dangerous. A man who is a fucking killer when it comes to the adversities and challenges. He just destroys the challenges that are standing there in front of him. But he has it under voluntary control. All right, you want to become this fucking savage that can dress in a suit and go, you know what, I've got this under voluntary control, man, but when I need to, bang, man, the fucking animal comes out. We talk about this. That's the chief. You're the Viking and the panda. You can be both, but right in the middle, you sit as the chief. If you don't have one or the other, you lose. You do lose. Because you become the Viking in, in, in berserker mode and you never stop and it hurts those around you. And when you do stop and the emotional walls come down, everything breaks down. But if you're the panda, you lack, and pandas are strong too, mind you, but you're the cuddly, soft, fluffy bear that no one respects because they don't see the power that you have. The reason why there's respect to and for me and in my house, and I respect others as well, obviously, but with me in my house is because I understand the power that I have, not in terms of discipline or domination, but just the power that I express every single day, my energetic output and what I do. When you're going all in, gentlemen, you've got to get aligned first. What do I actually want out of life? What's standing in my way? And then who do I need to become? That's part of your alignment. So we're talking about that with the Viking, the Panda, and the Chief. But all of that then ties into a nice big bundle. What do I want out of life? Who do I need to become? What is standing in my way? So what are the roadblocks? Because it's all well and good to just go, yeah, I'm going to build this, I'm going to build this, I'm going to build this, yep, I'm going to create that. Create but where? You don't have time. You don't have space. How can you create all these sort of habits and routines and rituals that are going to serve you without cutting the shit away? The universe always equalizes. You need to balance them out. You need to cut some shit and bring in some good stuff. Cut some shit, bring in some good stuff. And that's a double whammy too. Like you're always going to win at a higher level if you do it that way. What's the point of stacking all these amazing habits and doing all these good things if you keep fucking dropping the ball? It's crazy, man. Like, 
The two top reasons why I've become very successful in all areas of life, this isn't just business. The first one is not as great, funnily enough, as the second one. The first one are the great decisions I've made and action I've taken. Of course, being smart, focus, what am I focusing on and valuing my energy and what I'm focusing on and where I'm spending that. Goes hand in the second. The second one is actually making less fucking dumb choices, less stupid decisions. That's been way more successful, way more successful. I remember hearing someone talk about this. So like people talk about you can do anything in this world and you can do anything that you want in this world. And is, that's bullshit. Why would you want that power? Why would you want that power to do anything? The real power is actually those who choose the things not to do. I was like, man, that's so fucking true. Because you've got to think, gentlemen, for most of us, really, especially those listening to this or watching this, regardless of what your beliefs are, the stories, or again, the reasons that we used to justify why we're stuck in the position we're in, is at the end of the day, we all have lots of great choices ahead of us. But what limits that opportunity or that perspective or that availability is all the fucking dumb shit that we choose to do. That's chewing up time and energy and focus. It's chewing up your life. You start removing the dumb and stupid decisions, you start to bridge the gap. And this is the hard part about going all in. You actually never really know whether you're gonna have it or not, whether you're gonna get there or not. And I'm gonna dive into three key things just for you guys to focus on when we wrap this up as we move forward. Because going all in is a hard thing to really assess, right? Going all in, like a, you're always changing identity, but how do I change my identity, Al, in a consistent way without being overwhelmed and thinking, man, I just gotta flip this fucking thing 180 and just on a dime. You may be able to do that cold turkey with smoking or drugs or porn or other things, but we're talking about your entire identity, man. That's not easy, that's tough. So I'm here to acknowledge you men as well to go, you know what, this is fucking tough, it's not easy. <laughs> if it's easy, everyone would do it. Just like a six pack, everyone would have them, right? And then that wouldn't be valued anymore. So when you're growing and developing, building and evolving as a man, you don't want to be able to do anything. You want the power to be able to say no to the things you shouldn't be doing anymore. And coupled with that, you don't want to have it all in life. All you want is three things. And we talk about family self and service, their levels of power, influence and importance. And that's what builds not only your bloodlines, but your future mark when you're not even here, when I'm not even here, when we're dead in generations gone by that have evolved. If anything, when you look at this is why it's so important, whether you say why and keep diving deeper, this is the fucking truth of why. Because at a caveman level, they wanted to fucking learn how to make fire. They wanted to learn how to harness that fire. They wanted to learn how to develop better tools. They wanted to learn technology or not. It's the advancement and evolution to know that what we are leaving behind is better than what we came into. That's so fucking important, man. Do not wash that away. Your one priority, think about this, your number one goal in life is to leave behind something better than what you walked into and came into in this world. That is your number one for every man. You wanna be a real fucking man and leader in this world? That's your number one goal, man. And when you recognize that you are the prize and you are the most important person inside of your life, you can do it and you can do it with a level of fulfillment and reward and enjoyment knowing that it's not about this big burden these heavy shoulders and heavy is the head that wears the crown and all that other stuff and all those other sayings that brings this level of burden where you're just destroyed in life by providing and sacrificing for others it's actually your uplifting nature in evolving yourself that evolves the next generation all the while knowing that you've left your mark you've had an impact but you've actually enjoyed the journey and the ride because you've fucking done something about life because the default to life, ironically enough, is death. It goes hand in hand. So what going all in means and looks like is actually really creating a new identity inside of yourself. What do I want out of life? Who do I want to be? What's standing in my way? What do I need to do? What do I really need to do? Like properly going all in. Like just dipping a toe in the water properly going all in the little fat boy got bullied and picked on I'm in a state of depression man like i look back now and absolutely i was between the ages of 8 and 16 it's pretty fucking rough bullied picked on no girls like me i remember asking out a couple of girls on a date so I worked up the courage and you know what that's one thing i will give myself it's probably why i broke out of that mold really but i did still have a level of courage i always defended myself and i did ask a few girls out on dates even though i was this fat boy and i look back now i was like man what will you bring into the party which is sad really because i was just this innocent little fat boy that was very genuine and just enjoyed these girls companies and i remember one of them asking out and actually just started laughing they started laughing at me, just right in my face. And obviously word spreads around. <laughs> Fuck, do you think you had any chance with her? 
did you really ask her out? Did you, oh, you like it? Oh, lovey-dovey. <laughs> That's all right. You can just be in the friend zone. You can just be friends with her. And it all came out. And I'm like, man, that's rough. It's, you know, some people may look at how I approach life at times and maybe they think I've got a chip on my shoulder. Maybe I don't. But I'll tell you what, I wouldn't really call it a chip, but stuff like that, I fucking banked that, man. Who I banked that. But you can't just live out of that. You can't live out of fear of failure or I'll prove it to them or I'll show them. Going all in is actually going all in on yourself, not what you need to be to other people. But that fucking cut me, man. That was really rough. That was a rough period of my life. Becoming an elite athlete, moving away from home, having multiple operations. Going all in on that little fat boy was when I went, no fucking more, man. I'm fucking sick of this. Going all in is saying, I don't care how long this takes. Motherfucker, we're going to move out of this zone. We're going to move out of this place and we're never going back there. That's what going all in means. Going all in means I will never be that little fat boy again. I will never have anyone fucking bullying picking me. I'm a very strong, fucking handsome, powerful man. I am the prize. I'm obviously happily married with my children. But when it comes to that being a little trigger, which you guys know, that's tough, man. Like you got a young, you got a young boy, a young man, adolescent. Like obviously the opposite sex is something that holds a level of value for us, right? Uh, women always choose the winners. If they've got a couple to choose from, as much as we talk about men having the power in certain areas and so on and so forth, women always choose the winners at the end of the day. So when I looked at it, I was like, man, I felt like a loser. And I'm going through puberty and all that sort of stuff too. So going all in was like, you know what? I'm fucking never going back to this again. Going all in is no longer hiding bottles, half drunken bottles of Coke and chocolates and snacks that were left over in the pantry for my brothers because I just wanted to have them later, squirreling them away. Like that sort of mentality. That's crazy, man. I couldn't believe that I used to operate that way. Just a kid, right? <laughs> Going all in is never again. Never again. No more McDonald's, no more junk food. Start walking around the oval, running around the oval, lifting weights, getting healthier, getting stronger. Going all in is not stopping. You think it'll take you six months. It might take you 16 months. You think it might take you two years. It might take you five years. Going all in is... I'm all in. I don't give a fuck how long this takes. I'm going all in. I'm going all in despite the fact, this is why it's hard and you need a lot of courage, despite the fact that you don't know that the outcome might be realized or reached, especially when it comes to reconciling your marriage, your relationships. Going all in is, I don't know if this will absolutely pay off, but I know what, it will absolutely not pay off if I fucking stay where I am. So go, going all in is really this beautiful dance between a fear of failure and moving away from the pit and no longer being there and in that pa place of pain, but then seeking higher ground and greater things and becoming more inside of your life. It's such a delicate line to walk. Sometimes you need both. There's times where I've needed getting out of the pit and fear of failure many times. And there's other times where I'm like, you know what? This is, the, this is the stoic approach. This is what I love and what I need to do and live and breathe. That's why creating space is important. That's why taking time out is important. Your environment's important. Slowing things down is important. You need both of those. Going all in is moving away and having an operation, the first grade game against the Bulldogs, knee torn to shit, having my knee operated and my shoulder operated on March and May in 2008, being hung up in a fucking bed, it was my right knee and my left shoulder, and just feeling completely fucking useless and going, I will come back, I will make this work, I will find a way. Going all in is also adapting and evolving. And when you look at power cycles, probably six to eight year cycles, I stayed in each cycle too long. I was a little fat boy for a couple of years too long. I was the elite athlete for a couple of years too long. And that really hurt me. Ended up with nine operations over a six-year period. But going all in on life is I will find a fucking way. I will adapt. I will innovate. I will adjust. So I started gyms. I opened up gyms. End of 2011. Started the gym space and training people, developing that, and then becoming an elite athlete and an international athlete in CrossFit. Going all in on CrossFit. Going all in on... CrossFit meant that I didn't go all in on the gym, meant that I didn't go all in on my family. And this is a delicate thing to juggle, isn't it? Because going all in on life means that you need to juggle moving parts. It's not how good you are at handling your problems and your bullshit that makes you a leader. It's actually how good you can handle your own shit as well as handle other people's and support them and help them and guide them and steer them towards growing and becoming more. That's what a true fucking leader is. And that penny dropped for me not too long ago. I was like, you know what? Doing all of this shit just for me is fucking easy. This is actually, it, it is, man. Like, and I don't mean to be rude here if some of you are in a worse place, but it's actually very easy. Sorting your own shit out, your own routines, your rituals, your habits and whatnot, which we're going to go into these three pieces as we wrap up. That's easy, man. It's doing that at a high level as well as juggling all the other moving parts. Just like being the CEO and the founder, obviously, of High Performance Father. 
being this CEO, it's how can I juggle our team so we can connect with men, help them take that step and come into the tribe and make sure they're a good fit and build that entire, it's two cultures, man. It's complete culture on the front end of men that inquire and want to join our tribe and profiling them, screening them, make sure a good fit. And then what about delivery? In the middle of delivery, we're upgrading half a dozen new coaches inside to create a phenomenal like a phenomenal upgrade in our program, juggling all of that's just the circle of service as well as our existing employees, as well as our existing clients. That's just the circle of service on top of my family, my wife's needs, my children's needs. On top of all the monotonous stuff that you need to do when it comes to just your own bathing, grooming, eating, all the other things that just keeps you alive and thriving and staying healthy as a human. On top of doing my own shit and training and staying as an athlete and investing in myself, time and energy, physically, mentally, and emotionally. Going all in on life is finding a way to utilize family, self, and service. So when I was talking about addictions and other things earlier, we have containers. I'm absolutely addicted to HPF, man. Like it's, fuck, I would bleed and die for it. And I'm living for it as well and for these men. But at the end of the day, I have to come back. These are laws, man. These are the laws of HPF. There's family, self, and service. So I can't give you guys five podcasts a week. I can't fucking do it. It's not worth it to me because I'm breaking the law. I'm breaking the code of HPF. If I go all in on just service... And HPF, as much as I fucking love to, I lose. I drop the ball. I let everyone down. I let you down because I'm a hypocrite. So I love what we have in our laws slash principles of HPF slash code because it actually keeps certain containers where those who have addictive personalities, those are hungry to win, those who are dominating in business or they've got a great body or they've got a great family but they're missing the mark somewhere. Hey, let's, have, let's help you have those three things. You don't need to have it all, just have those three things and that will lead and leave the greatest mark in your life for yourself and for your family and those you love and care about. Going all in is knowing that the gym have run its course and selling it at a 7X loss, massive loss. Going all in is when I had nearly a quarter of a million dollars of debt when it came to lots of various sins of the past that have caught up with me. Not bad things like gambling or that sort of stuff, but just investments that were poor and didn't work out and overextending my commitments, obviously buying a shitload of equipment, buying the gym to start with and all the different moving parts. 50 grand of that, a quarter of a million dollars, <laughs> being rent that was owed to the facility. So I was obviously renting the space. I didn't own the building that the gym was at, I'm Royal Commando at the time. Crazy man, think about this. I had 50 grand, 50 grand were behind on rent. I chose to invest that in my business coach, mentor, and now one of my best friends. I chose to invest that money in him. So I had a decision. I can either try and pay down, the, I didn't have all that money, try and pay down the rent or go all in and find a different way. That's what fucking go all in looks like. Think about that. And it wasn't unethical. I made all that money back, paid off all my debts. I kept the real estate in the loop and let them know, didn't let them know that I spent their money on a business coach or mentor, let them know we're in tough times and I would find a way, I would make it work and so on and just kept kicking the can down the road for them, keeping them at bay as much as they were supportive, but also obviously pushing. It's like, hey, we need 50 grand that you owe. It was like 38 grand, but got over 50 at the time and then up near 60. I put all of that into myself. Instead of just doing the same fucking thing in the gym that was dying, I put all that into my business coach and mentor and then turned that into where we are right here today. That's what going all in looks like. My wife had just had our second baby. She just had Lillian. It was May, 2019. We were dying, man. I went through all the facts with my business coach and mentor, even though I'd invested that money in where we were and RDM and where everything was. I was called RDM at the time, obviously now called High Performance Father. I looked back then and we did the numbers, we got clear on the facts. It was one of the most powerful sessions I ever had. And this is why alignment's so important, men. And it's hard, but you gotta fucking do it. You need to get naked. You need to strip back to the bare truth. And when we did the numbers, this was in front of the group. I was the bottom feeder when we joined his group called the 1% or called Top. Not the bikies, it was an online coaching group. I'm not sure if there are bikies that are called the 1%, but I, I think I've heard something or seen tattoos or whatnot, but I was the bottom feeder, man. One out of 300. And I said to him, I said, man, I'm going to become fucking number one. You watch. Yeah, yeah, I've heard it all. I'm all in. Yeah, yeah, I've heard it all before. And he told me the same. He's saying exactly what I'm saying to you. Nah, I will, man. And now I am. I'm fucking number one. I am number one. And that was a crazy, that was a crazy journey. That was a baptism of fire. I'm like, here we are. I've got to put food on the table for my family. The gym is dying. That's our one sole source of income because Karina just had Lillian. It was May 2019 and we're sitting there and because Lillian was born in April. And we did the numbers, went through the facts, and this was a live session called a hot seat in front of everyone inside the business, all business owners and coaches. So there's a level of pride and ego, and I had to just, man, I had to strip down to the bare truth. And we did the numbers, and he's like, you've got nine weeks left. You've got nine weeks, and you're fucked. You're gone. Your business is gone. Your online business will be gone. You'll probably need to sell the home. It, 
that there's a lot of there's a lot of trouble coming for you. And I just sat there and I was like, fuck. He's right. I've been kicking this can down the road. And this might be you, gentlemen, when it comes to your relationships and your marriage. You might only have four weeks left. You might think you've got 14. You might think, oh, you've got a few more years. We'll just make it out and we'll be right. And a couple of weeks later, that's it. She's fucking gone. You need to get clarity on the truth of your situation. And when I did that, fuck, man. I'm getting goosebumps now. <laughs> that was crazy. I need to find that recording, actually. We still have it somewhere. That was one of the toughest moments in my life. I was like, my heart, everything just sunk. I was like, I've borrowed money. I've done other things. I've done everything I could, like a wide range, which led to more and more debt that was continually put into a sinkhole. It was not working because I was not working. I was not focused on what I needed to do. I just repaired my relationship and marriage with Corinne back in 2017, which was really tough. Took its toll, took time as well as more IVF failed. I tried and tried again. And then Lillian came into the world. And so it was pretty tough two years from 2017 to 2019, mind you. And I was like, man, nine more weeks. What, what the fuck will I say to Corinne? I'm going to have to come, and this is the truth. This is where the truth all comes out. I was like, I'm going to have to go to her and tell her that we're a quarter of a million dollars in debt and we're probably going to have to sell the home. So we're probably going to be in the red, even though the value of the home had gone up and renting. We'd bought a beautiful place that was 200 meters from the beach. Old home, but location was nice. I was like, fuck. That's the actual truth of my life. That's the truth of my situation right here and right now. I just sat there in it. Like, okay, you've got two options, Al. You can either keep going the way you're doing or you can fucking do something about it. And I tripled down and I worked and worked and around week six, this is the craziest part. Like you think, oh, yeah, flick the switch. Yeah, we can do it. It's, it doesn't work that way, man. Like I know that I might motivate and inspire some of you guys, but it doesn't work that way. I can do it. I've always believed in myself. It's just that the belief in myself had never coordinated or matched up or married up with the actual strategies, tactics, and approach in family self and service to provide the desired outcomes. And that's the hard part, man. You might fall into this fucking illusion. It's like, yeah, I always believe in myself. Yeah, but what's happening in your life? Is your belief converting to results or not? I was like, fuck, I've got to do something, man. And I just went and went and went, we need to get away. And in spring, I remember it vividly. In spring, we went off and uh, just stayed in these little cabins out in nature. Just need to get away, a bit of time, a bit of nature. And I think it was a bit of a Father's Day thing that we organized for myself as well, but it was September. So that was June, July, August, September. Actually, sorry, the session was in June and it was in August that we went away. So it was chilly, but it was nice. So I think about week six or week seven that I was getting closer and closer to obviously the inevitable. And I went out there and I shot some ads of just fucking pure fire, man. Like it's where I was like, nah. I was like, fuck this. This is fucking bullshit. These guys really want to change their life. They need to know the fucking truth, just like I needed to find out the truth then. And these were very raw, real ads. They'd absolutely get banned today, unfortunately. Talking all things, not swearing, but just being ridiculously direct. And doubled my ad spend. I had a bill, because the bill, the way that Facebook advertising works is the bill comes out on a bit of a sequence. So every sort of four, four to six days. Came back, shot all those ads over the weekend, pumped the ads, put the ad spend up, did all the things, did all the work, rolled those ads out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, pumped the money, had fuck all in my business account. I think maybe 180 bucks left in my business account. Had other little things that I couldn't, it wasn't like I was living on the street, but had other little things I could put into. But in terms of our actual business account, had less than 200 bucks in it. And I had a fee because I'd spent about two and a half grand on Facebook ads coming out on the Thursday. And then bang, guys inquiring appointment sale, appointment sale, appointment sale. Tried built by 15 in that week, got the money back. Fuck, okay, do it again with the ads, do it again with the ads. And mate, I, it's just crazy, fellas. I get goosebumps with this stuff. It's no different. It's no different to your marriage. It looks all in there, it's you know, all over. That's the 79th minute. They've got the set of six. They're down in your end, right? And it's all over. And they're already in front. They're already in front by four points. And it's your positioning. Going all in gives you the opportunity to get that fucking intercept, run 95 meters, and score the fucking try. It really is. You can't see it. And that's the hard part with life. You can't fucking see what that looks like. And that's the hard part. Because if you can't see it, you won't commit. And that's what makes life so fucking hard. You've got two choices. You can either stay where you are, you can do something about it. That doesn't mean that doing something about it has to be with us. Maybe you should join HPF. Maybe it's for your own fucking good, as well as your family, your wife, your relationship with your children, your marriage, your business. But I'm not going to make you make that decision. You choose that decision. But you also choose the outcomes of the decisions you make. 
And that's the craziest part. Going all in is I'm stepping into an unknown. I've got no fucking idea whether this will pay off, when it'll pay off, how it'll pay off, if it'll pay off, how much it would pay off if it does. And all the while, you're still trying to, like the duck in the water, stay calm above the water, but underneath, man, you're fucking scurrying. You're trying to find a way. I couldn't believe it was like week six or seven. We're nearly dead. And then obviously brought 20 to 30 grand in that week, reinvested, bang, reinvested, bang, and built and then paid off. They started paying off the debts and doing all that. And, and that wasn't by any means meaning that I was in the clear either. That's happened. That's happened again. And that happened in 2020 when the whole world was going into chaos and turmoil with everything happening. It was like, ah, shit. And then I found out that Krim was going to be pregnant with Roman. And this stuff was only two years ago. It feels like it was yesterday, but actually because of how much we've grown and where we are now, it's like a lifetime ago. And I guess the point is, and the reason why um, I didn't share it with the members at the time was I was like, man, I've now got the formula. The formula is not so much the strategy or tactic. The formula is the mentality. I will make this fucking work. I will do whatever it takes to make this work. This must be the answer. This must be the truth. This must be the way. This mentality. And I'll find the way with this mentality. But I hope this serves you well with just that small share as well, fellas. Like going all in is really hard because you're investing and in putting all of your eggs into a basket, so to speak, which I believe is the way. I don't think you should always necessarily do that, but you shouldn't necessarily have all these different buckets with only a little bit of, or baskets with only a little bit of your attention, right? Sometimes you got to go all in could be on your marriage but the order to do that is for yourself do it for you do it for we and then do it for thee do it for you do it for what you're buying into this agreement in the air and then do it subconsciously and as a byproduct of yourself into your marriage for your wife but going all in is stepping into the unknown that you don't even know exists yet that's really hard that's a really challenging thing to face that takes fucking courage that takes a lot of courage man and what we need to do to identify how to go all in is to actually start diving into three key areas. But what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to save those three key areas. I'm going to leave you with this episode just to sit on a few days, just to think about what going all in looks like. And in the next episode, which I will do in the next day or two, I'm going to open up what that actually looks like for you to going all in and how to start going all in. But first we must understand. So I'm going to put this into another episode so this doesn't go too long. And we're going to break that open from a strategic point of view and a mentality point of view of going all in. But please understand, this is something that you need to do. You owe it to yourself. Because when you're not all in, you're the opposite. When you're not all in, you're the opposite of that. Right? I'm all in, Al. What's the opposite? I'm fucking floating. I'm drifting. Right? I'm just moving through time. And that's really challenging because it's deflating, it's defeating. You don't know where you stand. You don't know where you sit in life. You don't know who you are to your wife. You don't know who you are to your children. You've lost the fucking gusto. You've lost the balls and the emphasis on, and it's not balls in terms of making decisions or your wife having the balls as well. You've lost your balls for fucking life. This is who I need to be. This is who I will be. This is who I must be to win and dominate and execute inside of my life. That's a critical thing. it really does become a case of, this is what I need to do. I don't know if this will pay off. I'm not quite sure of the outcome. I'm not quite sure what this means for my marriage, for my children, or for my business. But I know what will happen if I don't. If you're in a bike race, and your spokes are all out of line, and they're all out of whack, the spokes on the wheel, you've got 100% chance that you're not going to fucking win. If they're all lined up, they're all nice and straight, there's still no guarantee that you're going to win, but you've got a chance. You can be competitive. You've got a shot. But if they're not even lined up, man, you have no chance. There's 100% guarantee you will lose. That's what happens, gentlemen. And it might not be now. It might not be in five years. It might not be in eight years. But eventually... If you're not all in on life, you will lose. If you don't start exploring having the right people, places and things, the right environment, the right coaches, mentors, guides, other men, other like-minded men around you in your corner, challenging you, helping you challenge yourself, genuinely supporting you, having your best interest at heart. If you don't have that, how can you possibly think what all in actually means or know what all in means or see what all in means or have seen what all in has done for other men? It's been done, so it's possible, so I can do it. That's really rare. It's really hard. Of course it is. 99% of the world's fucked. But if you can find the group 
that's 100% of the 1% inside something like what we do, High Performance Father, your belief systems change. Your exposure changes. Your influence changes. You get influenced in a different way. Oh, fuck. It's a, I didn't realize there were so many guys who were going through the same problems. I didn't realize there were so many guys who were getting on top and winning. Because all my other mates, they're all fucked too. That's right. They are. But you enter an environment where it's, man, winning is the only option. Losing is not an option. There is no alternative. You start to see what that can potentially look like for you. What does all in actually look like for you? Because I tell you, man, like, it's not just making decisions to join something like HPF. It's not just making decisions on taking good change and good action. It's removing the fucking stupid decisions, like I said, and removing the ones that really hurt you. And then actually having the eyeballs and being that visionary to look forward into the future and go, ah, this is the opportunity costs. This is what it will cost me. And that's probably the most dangerous thing because you don't even know what that looks like. I can see that because of the amount of men that I've worked with. You come in, I can see where you are, exactly where you're going to go and what can happen. Even better than you can. It sounds crazy. Like there are men in their 40s and 50s saying, Al, you explain my life and describe it better than I can. I'm like, yeah, that's right. I'm not 40 and 50. But I've worked with 500, 800, probably over 1,000. That seems to be the range of the ages of men between 40 and 50. So I've got a 1,000 stories. You've got one. So I've actually dived into the life of these men more than you have, even though you're currently living it right now. Which is why I love what we do. Like it really helps you see what going all in actually looks like for yourself at the stage of life you're at, the phase of your journey with your marriage, with your children, with your work or business, to recognize that there are ways that you can turn things around. There's no guarantees, but when you go all in and put forth full effort, you'll have nothing other than full victory. The victory may come in different shapes and sizes and look slightly different and take slightly longer, but hey man, you're going to use that time anyway. The three things that we'll cover in the next episode, energy, time management, and relationships. Like I said, time management has nothing to do with time. Being fit, healthy, and strong mentally and physically has nothing to do with how you look. Your relationships and your marriage and being an amazing father or husband has nothing to do with the relationship per se. It's what you're doing inside of that relationship, like the organism that is your marriage. Right? It started out as a baby, toddler. It might be a teenager now might be a teenager or a resenting adult. Either way, your marriage is an organism that you're both feeding. But you must stay aligned and you must invest. Alignment is feeding it the right things. If it's intolerant to a certain food that you're feeding it, aka you're giving your marriage different things that is intolerant to what the relationship is for you and your wife, it's going to fucking vomit, get sick, have diarrhea. It's fucked. It's not good. If you don't feed it anything, it starves. So energy, time management and relationships there are three things that on the next episode, like I said, so this one doesn't go too long, we're going to peel the layers back and dive into that and what that actually looks like to give you the greatest possible pathway for your success moving forward and winning. I hope this serves you well, man. Take care. Have an amazing day, night, weekday, weekend. I've really enjoyed filming this too, filming it outside, so hopefully I haven't heard too many birds or other bits and pieces and noises, but essentially this is one that I've really enjoyed doing and the video is available on YouTube as well. Take care, man. And don't forget. To start asking yourself some solid questions around your life. What am I not going all in on? What do I need to start focusing on? Where do I need to focus my biggest efforts right now? What needs the most TLC inside of my life? What am I willing to commit to knowing full well that the outcome may not be reached in this period of time or at all? And am I still willing to do that? That takes courage, man. That takes balls. That takes a real spine. But funnily enough, when you do that, not knowing what could be, you actually get it. And that's the craziest part with life. Just like me with what started out as RDM is now HPF, being that fat boy who became an athlete, who lost everything, his home, his career, all of that, went back to moving in with his grandparents, living with them for a couple of years, marriage up and down, moving out with my wife, businesses failing, racking up a monstrous amount of debt. That's on top of our homeland as well, mind you. When I say those sorts of figures like quarter of a million, people have been in worse debt, people have been in less, but that's my story at the time, which was life or death going all in. Really was a case of having that courage and not knowing what the outcome might truly be, but backing myself and just keep rising. Just keep that rising every single day. Keep rising up and backing yourself. And that's all I kept doing. That's all you need to keep doing. But it's very hard to do on your own, man. It gets exhaustive, gets tired. It gets tiring. You get tired and it gets exhausting. And then we spin around in circles and we're like, well, what am I doing this for? 
and maybe you just needed to go for a few more days longer or a couple of degrees left or a couple of degrees right and that was all the difference and that's what all in actually means it's not this huge war cry beating your chest like some sort of warrior it's actually going this is how i'm going to make it work this is a non-negotiable and this is why and remembering that because that'll keep driving and fueling you especially when you're surrounded by the right people Take care, man. Hope this serves you well. And like I said, let's hit the strategies on the next session and dive into energy, time management, and relationships. Three key things on an amazing course that I'm actually building out for you guys, which I'm really excited about. It's going to be next level, man. And we've got it nearly complete. And uh, mate, it's just going to be unreal because we want to continually help fathers all over Australia and New Zealand and give them the opportunities, whether they're on the inside or not, to actually continually build their game and to have that fundamental. Always tell the truth and going all in. Two of our biggest ones. Take care, boys. I'll see you soon.